let's do a little warm up with this one, Lonzo. Something we talked about last week. The pastor who was robbed of a million dollars on live. Well, it came out this week that he is behind on payments in the tri-state area. A New, New Jersey judge says he owes 335000 to a construction company. He's also in default on a $4.5 million mortgage for a multi-apartment property in Connecticut. And Talk to me. allegedly owes, I got accused of ripping off one of his uh, parishioners for ninety grand. So, me and my suspicious ass mind, I'm thinking that was a setup. He had to lose the jury, jury to, 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 uh, to get the claim. Is, does he wear that jury all the time to church? And if somebody walked run into the church and rob his ass, and it was if it's insured, he could he could be out of debt. Because you can't uh, uh, bad and sad news, fellas. When you got jewelry that you had custom made, you can't sell it for what you paid for it. You can't sell it. if it costs you nine hundred thousand, you'd be lucky to get two hundred thousand for it. Because nobody wants the same shit that you got on. But if you have it insured and somebody steals it, then you can get this true value for it. Ah. So I'm not saying that's what happened, but I'm sure suspicious. I really am. Ooh, Lee. You know what? This is a good question, and something tells me that you have, Lonzo. Um, Marlon wants to know, Yo, Unc, have you ever met John Witherspoon, a.k.a. Pops? Uh, Pops used to play Eve of the Dark, man. Damn, I knew it. Talk to me. At Eve, well, actually he played Jeffy's, okay? Uh, back in the day, downstairs, I was actually run both clubs, upstairs and downstairs. We had a room in the back called the Babylon Room. In the Babylon room, I did all my dirty stuff. Comedy wasn't that popping yet. Comedy was not popping yet. And uh, I'd have people come into co- I'd have comedy back in the back. We had to cut the club in half to kind of make it more, more uh, cozy so that comedy and male exotic could fill the room, okay? Because comedy is an energy thing. You have to have a, a kind of need to fill people's energy in comedy and any type of performance. And we had uh, cut put some little some little divide, room dividers in the back of the club, had a little special place, had a little mini bar back there, and we would have um, uh, comedy. One of the guys who was one of my main guys, his name was Brad Sanders. If you've ever seen uh, uh, Keenan Ivory Wayne's movie, uh, Hollywood Shuffle, he was the the guy with the, uh, the bad, baddie boy. He was baddie boy, okay? Baddie boy, baddie, 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 baddie. You know, he was all sophisticated, but he played baddie boy. Brad, his name was Brad, Brad Sanders. He was one of my main comedians. And all these guys ran together. So anytime you opened up a room, they would these guys would come down to the room and, 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 and work out. And John was one of these guys. John uh Marsha Warfield from uh, Night Court, she would be down on a regular basis. Uh John Witherspoon would come through. Uh Honest John, the white boy. Um, he played, he was in a Hollywood shuffle. Uh Keenan Ivy Waynes played upstairs at Eve of the Dark. Uh, once or twice. D.L. Hewley played Eve After Dark because he lived in the neighborhood. So I was exposed to a lot of comedians. In fact, I have just as many comedic relationships than I do as I do with hip hop relationships. Because I've I've had guys working out. I, I got a flyer today with Joe Torrey, um, D.L. Hewley, a uh, bunch of folks on there. And I'm like, hey, I know I know every, everybody on here has played in my club at one point in time except for one dude. That's real, That's real talk. That's so cool, man. Everybody in the comments is agreeing that that's super badass. Should we uh, bring our special guest in or maybe give everybody an introduction to her before we bring her in? I want to talk about that thing with uh, the nightclub right quick. Oh, thank you. Let's jump into Killer Mike. Okay, yeah, I had that right here. That's funny. I was going to say, all right, next, let's, we'll end it with Killer Mike. So you sent me a clip of Killer Mike and the uh, nuisance bill. Explain the nuisance bill, what Killer Mike was talking about, and your personal experience in relation as a club owner. Uh, the nuisance bill is a bill that cities have the right to pass to keep a uh, certain type of activity out of the city. And especially if it's becoming a problem with the police department or the citizens of the community. Okay. Because you have a right to be in business, you have a, a, the privilege to be in business. Don't give your clientele the right to act a fool in the hood. Okay. And when you have uh, a business that has numerous police calls. You got people in the parking lot doing donuts. You got drinking three or four o'clock in the morning. You got shootings. You got all these things 
that will require the police department and make the city, uh, the area unsafe. Now you become a nuisance to the community and they can get rid of your ass. Okay. Simple as that. One signature on the pen can get rid of your ass. And this is what's happening to a lot of the sit lot of the clubs in Atlanta, from my understanding, is that uh the mayor is getting fed up. Um most of your shootings, gang activity, um, um ba basic violence and just hip hop stupid stupidity takes place at nightclubs. Okay. Um, I had a gentleman that loved to do donuts every Fucking night in front of Eve after dark. He would do a donut and people live on the corner and be complaining. They call the police, he's gone. But I still got to deal with the police. You got when the fight break out and the fight get too big, I got I gotta call the police. Every time I call the police, it's what they call an incident report. When you get an incident report, you get too many incident reports at some point in time, that stuff goes to the city council. City like city council can pull your conditional use conditional use permit because what every business has a it has a Large capacity business has what they call a conditional use permit, which means under these conditions, you can operate. If you violate these, uh, these conditions, you can't operate no more. And they can add or subtract different things. Like there's a club in LA right now, uh, Regency West, never will never be open past one o'clock. Don't ask me why, because well, I know why. It's in a residential neighborhood. It's right next to a residential neighborhood and you ain't gonna be open past one o'clock. That's part of the deal. It might be 12, because I know most of the events I know of wrap up about 11, 30, 12, 12 o'clock, okay? When I had mine at the club, um, I had to open, go through the rework, come through the back door, and open, had to open up the front door and do some, 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 some simple things. But again, only thing saved me for 40 years was that the owner owned all the houses in the area, okay? He owned all the houses within striking distance of our nuisance. So, they were, if there was a problem, he would bring it to me and I'd take it straight to the person that caused the problem. Or sometimes he would just say, uh, in the, they, people wouldn't even complain because they knew it was here. They didn't want no problem out of him. So they, they, they let it go. But uh, the fact that um, folks is trying to stand up, and I, I understand this, I would love to have more places to go. But when people get there, they got to know how to act. Bottom line, bottom line. When they get there, they got to know how to act. And I just, I sent you another piece also uh, from a brother, I think he was out of Australia, dude out of Australia, club owner. And he was like, you know what? I'm shutting this, I'm, I'm shutting this shit down. I'm tired of being disrespected. I'm tired of people acting like I'm, I owe them something if I'm in business. And all these factors go into today's, club owner. That's what people say. All right, Ben, you think about opening a club? Hell no. Hell no. The, the, this new generation don't know how to act. They think you owe them something. They want to come in. They want to act a fool. They want to be, they want to bang on you. Dude, I'm too old to get banged on. I don't want to go to jail behind shooting no fool. I don't want to go to the hospital behind getting shot. So no, 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 no. And this is the situation that um, we've allowed ourselves to come into. And basically, this is our, it's everything that we're dealing with is our fault. And not to deal with that first is bullshit. Not to deal with the fact that the clientele is the problem. It's not the club owner. It's not the club. The club, the four walls and the roof. It's the people that come there that don't know how to act. They get a little alcohol in them. They want to start acting a fool, shooting and that fighting. You can't do that. If you really care about the venue, change your attitude toward the venue, change your attitude toward business. Okay, when I had my last one, one of my my last uh, one of my other clubs, I was so glad to leave it. It was ridiculous, but somebody got killed before I had a chance to leave it. And guess what? I I never saw the person get shot. I knew the person that did the shooting or the person that got shot. But that don't mean shit. I'm the one with the lawsuit. Hell no. I'm the one who had to file bankruptcy. I'm the one who had to sit up in court and listen to people cry and testify that you know that I supposed to do something wrong because I didn't do nothing wrong. I don't even know this dude. But that's how the game goes. Somebody down your parking lot is your fault. You're gonna write a check. Okay. It ain't the fact that he was uh the kid was a um the brother was whatever the 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 um the guy who shot him was a gang banger trying to make it make make a name for itself. They don't care about none of that right they don't care about that hood bullshit. They don't care nothing about that. Somebody died on your lot give give us a check. Bottom line and this is what people fail to realize 
Um, if anybody check, I'm in a documentary called United Skates. In United Skates, most of the nightclubs are being shut down because people don't know how to act. Guys that don't even skate come to the parking lot and it's caused problems for those who do. Trying to see who's in the hood, who's, who's out of their hood. Cats just want to come across town to skate because skating means are limited. But on the way to your car, you're getting sweated by some asshole who ain't got enough to do, who can't hardly walk, not long skate. But the owner is responsible because if he wasn't open, this shit wouldn't be happening. So they turn skate, skate, uh, skate, uh, different skate rings in the Home Depots or or um, or uh, Walmart's because the skate ring is usually about a hundred thousand square feet. Make a hell of a lot of makes a makes a nice Walmart, makes a real nice Home Depot. And yeah. and here's last but not least, when it comes down to the taxable income or the tax base for the city. They make much more money off of a Home Depot than they do a skating ring. Skating ring only opens so many hours a day. Only so many people are going to be skating so many days a week. And Home Depot, they buy shit from 6 o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock in the morning. Ask me how I know. And they got a whole lot more screws to sell. And y'all got wheels to roll. Let's go to our guests. 